joined Transport Systems Catapult uh, about just over four years ago. Um, and uh, there'll be a plot at the end of this um, uh, presentation, which will give you a sense of what's happened since then. Um, the short version is that we were involved in um, a set of R&D activities uh, for UK government, trying to look at uh, technologies in non-transport adjacent domains that could support answering questions about these future mobility systems and some of the challenges. So we were looking particularly at defence aerospace and methods for co-simulation and at computer gaming. And so methods for scaling up really, really big types of problems. Um, and uh, to our great surprise, some of it worked. So um, we, almost exactly uh, three years ago now, uh, started to get some ideas together that, that could perhaps turn into something. Did what everyone does and write a research grant and then didn't think much more of it for quite a few months um, and then got funded and then had to form a company. So uh, I'm going to spend a few minutes telling you a little bit about why that came about and what we do and then talk through a little bit about what that experience has been like because many of the journeys of people through the Turing Institute may well involve coming up with a great idea, developing it and then taking it on to something and uh, bringing it through the next phase of your own careers. So um, I'm also conscious I'm the last thing between you and lunch, so I'll try and keep it brief. OK, so um, the context for us um, is this. So we, we have these technology changes, revolutions hitting transport and mobility, um, and other sectors also being affected, where we've got AI and machine learning, which we weren't particularly... Um, well we can do a lot more with now than we could even a few years ago. So autonomy, connectivity, electrification and sharing are changing the way we think about transport systems um, and they're happening basically now um, and certainly within the planning horizons. Well, yeah, it depends, it depends on whose uh, roadmap you look at. Um, autonomy is sort of soon-ish, maybe. Um, co connectivity is with us, for sure. Um, electrification is with us and growing. Um, and sharing is also growing and the business models are developing and there are challenges and, and so on. But um, unusually in transport and mobility, we've actually got some cards to play, which is pretty exciting, actually. We, we've got more opportunities to do things differently now than we've had perhaps, certainly at any point in my career previously, which is exciting. But there's some problems, and um, there's a great introduction to some of these in the earlier talks. There are lots of different agents people, communities involved in this same problem. And they interact and they have competing requirements and they talk different languages and they don't share data and they use different tools. And um, actually they often stand to benefit from closer cooperation. But that's really, really hard traditionally. Um, so uh, we felt and seemed to hit upon some methods that meant that we could build some tools that could be usable across that piece. So to help do a better job of enabling good decision making and informing the rollout of better mobility services. And so uh, we'll be delighted if we manage to be part of making that happen. OK, so, uh, so what do we do? So we, we're a software company. We're applied, an applied technology software company. Um, and we've got auto advance when I didn't want it. Um, <laughs> right on cue. Um, so. Um, we build worlds, we build um, models of places. So we drive that from data. So uh, you asked about having a sim synthetic sim city. One of the best ways of doing that is to take real data because it's a lot easier than making all of it up. Um, we then roll mobility services into them. So we set up populations of people. We set up the mobility supply, the services that are being run, and the incidents and events and disruptions that affect them. And then we run experiments. We test scenarios, do a lot of the things that all of you are very, very familiar with. So, um, but the way that we've done that is build out a, a very modular architecture in the background. Because uh, for as much as we've got a big company name, um, and I'd love to think we were the best people in the world at all of these methods and techniques, um, I'm in a room full of very smart people right now. And I know that many of you will be better at a lot of those things than we are. And certainly over the coming years, as we hope to be a successful company, we are going to need to adapt and incorporate new developments as we go along. So we put a lot of effort into making that possible and um, designing the architecture to support it. 
Um, that also enables us to reuse elements and recompose things quite, quite quickly, which is helpful. Um, and then on the right-hand side, we've built a set of tools to enable easier interaction. So, Damon, your, your vision of is it possible to have tools that these different parties can use? Um, yes, I, I'm fully convinced that it is, and um, we've made a start at trying to do some of that. would love to work with many of you in building that out and doing more of it. Um, so why is that valuable or useful? Well, so this is a typical infrastructure lifecycle. Um, I've taken an infrastructure case here, but you, you often go through a process of coming up with a whole load of ideas and just testing them a little bit to see if they're stupid ideas or not, and then starting to down-select and do more detailed analyses and more sophisticated runs. Um, and very often you have a transition between outline planning methods and detailed operational design sometime, somewhere down here. And very often those tools don't interact, and very often it's different people. And a lot of the cleverness or the insight that went in up front into designing a system is lost or has been forgotten or doesn't carry through to the actual delivery process. And certainly wasn't, wasn't available when you were trying to resolve the incident that happened because something was put in the wrong place. And so what we've been able to do is use some of these um, software techniques and um, uh, developments in compute to be able to run very large detailed models at all stages of that process. So you can see, use the same resource base, configure slightly differently, but to support different parts of that decision making. Um, and our contention is that that helps. It makes it um, easier to reuse things, and ensures high levels of quality, it means you can actually ask better questions at the design phases. Got a better chance of doing something good. And I want to talk about a couple of um, research programs that we've been involved in, which uh, gave rise to the company in the first place. Um, and uh, some examples of how we've been using it, and then to talk about what that's felt like as a journey. So um, this is the program that got us started. So uh, about three years ago, um, the UK government were trying to uh, invest or support investment into connected and autonomous vehicle programs and trials. And there's an intelligent mobility fund set up, and a call was opened. And around that time, we'd been doing this prototyping work. Uh, so we thought we'd have a crack at putting something in. Um, and um, this, this is what it led to. So we were working with a computer gaming company called Improbable, who've um, got a lot bigger since, uh, since, we, since that time, uh, and Cubic, who many, many of you will be familiar with, run the Oyster card system, amongst other things. Um, and the approach was building out tools to help uh, manage fleets of future autonomous vehicles and to build a lot of the uh, capability around that using these simulation methods. Uh, it's set up as a 36-month program. Uh, we're actually closing it in 27 because we've been able to achieve everything we tried to set out. So it's gone pretty well. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, so what does that mean? Hopefully this will work. Yeah, it did work. Okay. So this is something we did actually very early in the project, about 18 months, 18 months ago, something like that. So it's building up a world out of data. So you take uh, road network mapping, you take um, transit data, you take demographic data and land use, you then look at travel demand and estimates of zonal travel demands and synthesize individual trips, which popped up as uh, O's and D's a minute ago. Um, we then play through scenarios. Here you've got two competing fleets uh, uh, de employing different um, strategies, different optimizations. In the back end of it, it's a big agent-based model. So we've got individual trips, uh, individual vehicles, individual people being, being looked after. We can take in other data feeds. There's a weather feed coming in here, and we're simulating lots of more ta taxi demand when it rains um, and how the fleets react to that, what sort of trips get served and so on. So that was, for us, that was kind of a proof of concept demo, really, very early on. And it worked, which was, which was good. Um, what we then went on to do was formalize how we do that a bit better in terms of combining different types of data, so both open data sets in uh, the freely available downloadable sense, but also um, come back um, premium data sets where we work with data partners to be able to um, provide a higher level of quality or level of assurance. Um, configuration tools, so that whether you're an infrastructure owner or a, a mobility service provider, you can configure your parts of the simulation to be representative. But you don't have to be an expert in the other bit in order to get something meaningful. 
um, run it all together, and then provide outputs that can feed into operational decision making or into um, data analytics and planning. It's all good fun. Um, okay, so one aspect of that was being able to link into um, some. Oh, that's, let me try and get that back. Okay, uh, that should start. Does it start? Yes. Okay, so um, one of the interesting aspects of the R&D program was about trying to use different means of interacting with users. And so we were collaborating with a, with a gaming company and so started trying to use some of the uh, games engines as ways of hosting collaborative environments so that you can have multiple users viewing the same base simulation and being able to interact with their parts of it. Um, and that's, it's a really interesting approach, and it, it seems to be quite effective. It's still something that needs more work to productize, but is, um, particularly if you have multi-site logins and so on, can be quite, quite powerful, quite useful. Um, so this is an, an auto-built version of Greenwich. One of the things we found in the process was that um, actually rendering things to look realistic uh, distracts people. It means they don't notice what is happening. And uh, so having colored zorbs buzzing around a gray Greenwich is actually a better way of communicating what's happening with the fleet, turned out. It's also easier to code, which is good news as well. Um, okay, so um, second project, and this is actually something that we ran in parallel with um, uh, Talon, the first project, where we were trying to use those tools to design and test service operations. So this is a project called Merge Greenwich. Um, it's unusual um, in that it brought together a large fleet operator, uh, city representatives, a set of research organizations, and, a, and an OEM to be able to try out city-compatible commercial autonomous rideshare services. Okay, so it was called CC Cars for a bit, and we renamed it, as you can probably understand. Um, but the idea was to use these simulation environments to help answer some of these difficult questions about what happens if you deploy a particular type of service. Where do the trips come from? Which routes do they go down? Where does congestion build up? What, wh where's the empty, where are the empty vehicle miles? Uh, what are the recharging requirements if you have electric vehicles? And so on and, and so on. And so to do that, we had to uh, extend the back end of our uh, simulation platform to have all of those features in it so we could configure those services. And I want to show you a snapshot of an output. So this is looking at, at is actually looking at a rideshare minibus service within that. Um, but looking at vehicle by vehicle activity plots over a day, um, over a scenario day. And so being able to look at the states, whether you're idle, uh, dispatched for a trip, occupied with passengers on board, going back to recharge and so on and so on. Um, the purple bars there are recharging um, uh, events. And so one of the very obvious th features of this particular plot is that either you need to change the vehicle, the uh, battery capacities of these vehicles or you need to juggle your recharge strategy because you're going to have a big drop in supply just at the end of the morning peak. Okay, so this is sort of an interim output that helps you do additional design iterations. But what we were excited about is that it's very hard to do that using traditional methods. So this has actually been, been very useful in helping those different partners get a good handle on how some of these services might practically be brought to market and where some of the gotchas are, where it's actually quite hard to make money out of some of these services and to do it well. So just going back to your point earlier on. Um, OK, but we can help test and do it in simulation before you actually go and spend a lot of money doing it, which is helpful. OK, so the last few slides are about um, what it's like being a little, start a little startup rather than an academic. Um, so uh, we started, I mean, in the home turf, really, which was collaborative R&D projects. Great, we understand about those. Um, and we had to try and understand how to use them differently, where the, the objective wasn't write a great paper, the objective was get a commercially viable proof point, build a collaboration, test something, but not in a way that you can publish, but in a way that you can start to figure out how to monetize. Then a process which we're still in and probably will be in forever, but is about um, iterating those capabilities with, with your users. Um, then understanding how to accelerate that and grow and scale up something that seems to work into, um, into something that's a big sustainable entity. And we, we're kind of here at the minute. 
and obviously that's what we're aiming to do at the end of the day is take over the world in our bit of the world and probably with other people rather than on our own but still we're going to try and take over the world obviously um so uh that's all well and good and lots of people will have a slide that's a bit like that the, there's an analogy that i quite like which is that you've probably all been in the circumstance where you're speaking to a friend and you come up with a great idea and you start just scribbling it down probably on a bit of paper or a bar beer mat or something and you might well, design an aeroplane okay well let's actually let's make one okay fantastic we start folding one up brilliant and you gradually find that you're sort of strapping on wings and bits of blue tack to hold on engines and you're rattling down this runway with this thing that you only thought of about 15 seconds ago but going extremely fast and, and it's slightly terrifying being on the front of that thing because you know how much blue tack there is involved in it um, and then eventually hopefully you start to look a bit like that sort of to the outside world as a graceful swan flying off into the distance. But um, it feels a little bit a little bit more like that now than than that. Oh, than that. But um, yeah, there's still definitely the uh, the sense of going very fast and figuring out as you go along. Um, I, I'm not going to dwell on this because it's a complicated slide and it'll take ages, but something we've been very fortunate to, to do over the last couple of years is work with some fantastic partners. And it's, been, it's enabled us to really accelerate how we've um, gone from an idea on a whiteboard to um, a bit of paper that said, yep, go on, get on with it, and terrifyingly resigning jobs and creating something new, to actually being able to build up to having a company and some proto product and um, a community of people that we, we work with and we value a lot of those relationships. Um, you're going to hear some more a little bit later, I think, about some of the new partnerships and projects that are coming through, which we're very excited about. Um, hopefully, we'll have the opportunity to work with some more of you in the room over the coming years. Um, thank you to these folk, because they're awesome. And you can't do any of this stuff without a great team of people. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you.